بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا صلاة العشاء بجماعة الحاضرين المسلمين كما تقبلت من عبادك الصالحين يا رحم الراحمين وفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم There is a hadith that comes from us from Sayyidina Al-Irbaat bin Sariyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu قال صلى بنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم ثم أقبل علينا بوجهه فوعظنا موعظة بليغة ذرفت منها العيون ووجلت منها القلوب فقال رجل يا رسول الله كأن هذه موعظة مودع فأوصنا فقال أوصيكم بتقوى الله والسمع والطاعة وإن كان عبدا حبشيا فإنه من يعيش منكم بعدي فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين تمسكوا بها وعضوا عليها بالنواجذ وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة رواه إمام أحمد وأبو داود وإمام الترمذي وإبن ماجة إلا أنما لم يذكر الصلاة. This is a very important hadith and a beautiful hadith as well. It comes to us from Sayyidina Irbad bin Sariya, one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who narrated that Allah's Messenger, alayhi salatu salam, led them through the salah, led his companions through the prayer. One day, and then he faced them. So after finishing the prayer, he turned around the people, and he had something to say. Then he delivered, the narrator here says, then he delivered an an eloquent sermon that brought tears to the eyes and fear to the hearts. The way how the sermon, the way how the speech was, it was in a such a way that the, the, the people, they started crying upon hearing those words. And the hearts, they started trembling. A man mentioned, O Messenger of God, it is like the admonition or the speech of one who takes leave. So do advise us. Again, it seems this mawa'idah, this uh, speech that you're making, it seems that it is the speech of somebody who says goodbye. So please advise us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I instruct you to observe taqwa, righteousness, fear of God, consciousness, translate it as you wish, it's all the above. So I instruct you to observe taqwa and to listen and obey even if a person from Habashi, uh, from Habash, referring to a black person, is going to be a ruler over you. Those of you who survive after me will observe many discords. So you must adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa caliphs. Hold firmly to that 
and bite that with your molar teeth. We have a metaphorical expression right here. Be aware of new things in religion or new affairs because every new thing is an innovation and every innovation is an error meaning it leads you astray this hadith is full of wisdom no matter how you look at it and a similar narration is also transmitted in the 40 hadith of Imam al nawi this will be sufficient enough to go over this one tonight inshallah so let's just uh, exp explore some of the sentences of this hadith right here first of all and Nabi alayhi salatu salam always he spoke beautifully and he was very eloquent but the sahabi the one who's narrating this one is saying that this was an exceptional it was an exceptional speech what does that mean to us it means to us that whatever this speech contains must be taken seriously and Prophet is ra raising awareness by making this an exceptional eloquent speech that's the first lesson that we learn whatever it contains is an important message for every single one of us to grab hold to not only for the companions but any believer who comes after them as well that's the first thing and then the hadith continues by saying um, I'll just stop at a few places, not every place. A man submitted. Um, uh, uh, oh, Prophet of God, give us an admonition, which means give us a, uh, an advice. Wasiya. Now, you can see right here the khuluq, the manners or the the morals of the companions they had not only towards Prophet ﷺ, but it became later on as a tradition, as a customary, especially to ask from people, you know, who are elders, who are scholars, who are learned people, to give them a, an advice, a wasiyah. Well, somebody will say, why, what's wrong with you? No, no, there is nothing wrong with the person. But out of not just respect, Definitely it is respect, but it's not just out of respect, but also you're using it as an opportunity for you to learn something new. Nowadays, we don't do that. Even though we may, we may be spending uh, time with scholars and with learned people and with elders, benefit from their wisdom you know, and their experiences, we care less about that. And we go through mistakes without using the opportunity to really learn from those who have um, gone through those uh, through those paths before so this is something very important to note as well especially for the younger ones to make it as a part of their uh, of, of their tradition as a part of their customs when they meet or when they spend time with uh, scholars or learned people or elders to ask them for a wasiya awsini and we have this in other hadith as well, where the companion is just directly asking the Prophet, saying, Oh, Prophet of God, give me an advice. So this is just one of many, this hadith right here. Now, another lesson that we learn from this hadith right here is that Nabi Nabi first and foremost, he gives them the advice by saying, Observe taqwa. Taqwa is the head of everything, pretty much. It is behind the prayer, it is behind every act of worship. In order for you to attain taqwa, in order for you to attain taqwa, it's all over the Quran as well, it is mentioned. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I don't need to give you examples, you have the examples of fasting and even hajj and so on. And listen and obey, even if a habashi, he's talking here about a slave, is placed over you. And I want you to think about a time when slavery was practiced. Nowadays, if we say a Habashi, someone from Habash, right? Somebody from Ethiopia, if it's placed as a mayor, as a governor, as an imam, as a scholar, as an executive director, or whatever, it's just like anybody else. It doesn't raise any concern. But 1400 years ago, when slavery was in practice, 
And people used to practice it right and left, used to have slaves, purchase them, sell them, you name it, and all of that. For Nabi alayhi salatu salam to make a statement like that, saying that if a, uh, a Habashi person, meaning if a, uh, a slave person is being put over you to rule you, he holds that title as a ruler, you obey that ruler. So don't look at the background, don't look at the skin color, don't look at, no, just obey your leader, regardless who he is. And of course, there are some uh, conditions for sure that that leader needs to have, right? You know, if, uh, if he is uh, somebody who is going to mislead people and misguide them and take them away from the worship of God and all that, there is no obedience of the creation in disobedience, in disobedience of God. These are very clear um, rules or clear um, indications here. So, but we're talking about here a, a righteous, somebody who's a Muslim and is leading over you, over you Muslims, regardless of his status or regardless of his skin color, must be obeyed. Now, this statement brings home two important principles. Number one, it's about defeating the skin color and racism and all of that. Right? That's number one. Number two is the importance of obeying the ruler. What happens often when people rebel against the rulers, there is a chaos in society. Because those rebels, those who are rebels, they don't necessarily have an agenda. They don't necessarily have, they're not going to necessarily bring uh, peace into society. But they're just, they just want to get rid of it and that's it. They want to get rid of the ruler. They want to get rid of the system and that's it. There is nothing. And often they are pushed by other countries or by other um, either organizations or playing the politics or the interests of other places and other individuals. And we have seen what happened in the Arab world with Arab Spring. We have seen so many problems and all of that. And we're not saying that these are good leaders either. Right? We're not saying that these are good leaders. They are dictators for sure. But often people, they have to think that what, if this is done, then what's going to happen after? Or who is behind this, motivating people to do so and so? To do such and such? Who is behind all of this? And where is this going to lead the nation? So all of these are very essential questions. Why? Because yes, you're getting rid of somebody who may not be good, yet a Muslim. He's not calling you to worship idols or to, you know, probably a dictator, maybe an oppressor to a certain level. However, however, if you don't have that person, you may have chaos. And when you compare having chaos in society versus having somebody who may not be good, but yet there is a system, there is law in place, then you're going to choose that. If you have two evils, right? This is a, a maxim, this is a universal uh, Islamic maxim in the fiqh. That when you have two evils, you choose what? You choose the lesser evil one. When you have no other choice but these two, then you choose the one that has lesser evil. Because if you, if you remove this lesser one, then you're left with what? With a bigger one. And you have no other option but that one. So that's why and Nabi Alayhi was very wise. And he recommended people to obey the leaders. Now, again, obeying the leaders doesn't mean that you're not going to speak the truth. Doesn't mean that you're not going to stand against when there are major uh, problems in society and when there is oppression and when there is lies and deceives and you name it. No, you're going to um, fight against these phenomena, these negative phenomena that happen, that come from such leaders. However, without causing the chaos, without necessarily causing an uprising in society, and replacing something bad with something worse. This is something that needs to be taken into consideration. Because when great scholars, recently, when the Arab Spring took place, they stood um, against the rebels, they stood against the chaos, they were concerned, not that they were really loving the dictators right not that they have sold themselves to the dictators or anything like that and maybe some yes but majority sometimes that people they they quickly they judge them negatively 
That, that was not always the case with many of them. But unfortunately, they had to choose the lesser evil and make sure that there is peace in society. There is at least uh, no chaos in society. Because they knew before that if that, you know, the regime breaks and problems uh, come into society, there is going to be a complete chaos. So that's why and Nabi as I said, is uh, highlighting this point right here. And then uh, those of you who survive after me will observe many disorders. And subhanAllah, you have seen during the time of the Khulafa with Sayyidina Uthman, with Sayyidina Ali, you have seen the fitna, the first fitna, the second fitna, the Sifin, I mean the, the, the battle of Sifin, the battle of Jamal, you know, the camel and and uh, major problems that, that took place. But Prophet والسلام, is advising us to stick with the sunnah of the Khulafa. Meaning what the Khulafa, what these caliphs, these four caliphs are going to tell you to do, advise you to do, this is the best for your interest and you should follow. And he says, not just simply follow, but he gives us a metaphorical expression by saying that even if you have to chew, he says. What does he say here? Hold firmly to that, to following their advice or their tradition and bite that with your molar teeth. As you would be biting, you know, the, the trunk of the tree. Because what is, that, what is that expression? It means that if you have no hands, if, it's, if your hands are unavailable and you're not able to hold yourself to, to that, then you have nothing but your teeth. You still have to uphold to those, uh, to those uh, advices and uh, the sunnas. As we're saying, not sunnah from the Islamic terminology, from the fiqh terminology, but we're referring here to sunnah, the tradition of these khulafa. Uphold them, uh, follow them, even if you have to bite, chew with your teeth like that. It's just, as I said, a metaphorical expression right here. And later on he talks about the bid'ah, and we talked before about the bid'ah. Bid'ah, there are two kinds of categories, and Nabi Ali Wasallam here is talking about the negative one, uh, the one that you know, introduces something that Prophet Sallallahu never uh, mentioned, but you're making it as a sunnah, for example. And Prophet never made it a sunnah. Or Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala never made it a fart or wajib. And you're all of a sudden creating something out of uh, your own whims or finding a da'if hadith and making it as a condition in your religion. These are all bid'ah, for sure. These are all innovations in Islam. And Islam is free of these innovations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower with his peace and his blessings. Our beloved and respected Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.